Hello and welcome to Pigeon Deva News. My name is Tato Swan and today we're in Alberton. We are here to see Hein Benecke. He's going to tell us more about his uh, one loft uh, race performances, his club uh, performance, uh, how he races, how the, the food, uh, the medication and his initiatives throughout his racing career. Don't go anyway. Stay tuned. Hi, <coughs> everybody. I would like to um, uh, spread a, a message um, to catch the South African uh, Pigeon News portal on pigeondivenews.com and don't miss their web series where different founders get featured on the show every Fridays on YouTube, Pigeon Diver News TV. The news company is owned by Mr. Samuel, whom I met and who is a client of PIPA <clears throat> and uh, who used to buy the Golden Prince and uh, Gentle Lady <clears throat> and um, every other, um, yeah, many other super pigeons. <clears throat> and his main ob objective is to grow the sport, the pigeon sport in South Africa, uh, as there is a big potential and also to grow the sport worldwide. So, um, don't forget, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this uh, channel and um, to like or comment the channel. So I um, would like to say hello to all the pigeon founders in South Africa. Uh, many regards from Belgium. I'm Nicholas. Uh, this was Nicholas from Pipa from Belgium. Bye bye. Um, hi, Benneke. Thanks for joining us on this. Uh episode on, on season two of Pigeon Dave News. Toto, thank you very much and thank you for the great uh, job you guys are doing at uh, Pigeon News or Pigeon Diver. I mean, uh, your first series, I mean, everybody was keen to watch and uh, I think it's very informative and it's, it's nice to, to meet some people all over South Africa, especially. And, and we're just going to start from the beginning. Uh, from from who did you learn uh, most about the sport? How did my, it start? I think my dad, my dad actually taught us, uh, you know, how to fly pigeons. Uh, me and my brother Martin. Uh, so we we started cleaning lofts from a very early age. Uh, learned how to to look after pigeons, uh, make sure they healthy, and uh, then also uh, it was quite competitive between the two brothers and the father on the Saturday. So that was quite fun, you know, everybody had, uh, had the fancy and then, um, but yeah, um, definitely uh, my dad, Carl, uh, he's, he's been in the game quite, uh, quite some time and then obviously uh, from there we, we took on. We fly pigeons for a good 30, 35 years of our lives, uh, maybe more. Um, I had a bit of a break, you know, with, with uh, school and university for five years. And, Stuff, I played a little bit of rugby and so on Saturdays it was tough to, to be at the lofts and also to play but um, you know when after that you know getting married uh, the first thing is to put up a loft and, and to get some pigeons again. Yeah. And, and we've seen we've seen your results um, uh, during the past season with your your bronze uh, your bronze um, achievement uh, the Sun for bronze um, just tell us more about that achievement, um, the, 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 the bird, and, and what measures did you put in place to get those Yeah, results? it was quite a, a very interesting season. Um, uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but there's quite a lot of guys that know that I was in an accident in, in February, and my friend, uh, Dirk Grobler, he's the chairman of the TRPF, it's also uh, his loft that I'm uh, flying from in Alberton. Um, he looked after the pigeons and I ended up with about 55 uh, young birds. Um, and yeah, it, it was one of those seasons uh, when I got out of hospital, they were on the road already because of Dirk. He was looking very uh, well after them. And then um, I became the young bird uh, champion in, uh, in the GPU with uh, Formain de Kok and Andre Small. It's the first time that we had to share it in the last race, but it was super. And then obviously the hen, uh, 
winning, uh, winning the bronze medal this year for me at um, Sand Pool at the Category 500 for 2,000 pigeons. Uh, she was a, an absolute uh, superstar. Um, and and, and you, you know yourself, you know, you need four, five, six, four, five pigeons that, that will do well every year or fly in front. Uh, and then, and then you, you're there with the point. What, were those um, the achievements you were most proud of, or are there any other? What's the uh, you most know, proudest? You know, the in the time that we okay. fly pigeons, there's always, always uh, some, you know, we, we're quite competitive with the one lot. I think at uh, supper, I think we won supper twice. Um, I think Cape Town lofts, uh, we were eighth uh, on the final, uh, equal first, but walking the eighth. Uh, two years ago, and then uh, <clears throat> I think from the loft itself, from from Alberton, uh, two years ago, three years ago, two years ago, uh, we won the Gauteng Combine uh, race. And what I liked about that race, we had another two pigeons in the top ten, and that was out of eight thousand pigeons. So for us to have to, to clock three pigeons in the, in the top ten on that specific day, and then also to win it, uh, it's definitely up there. Yeah. And then speaking of one loft, um, is that the route you'll be now going into more? Oh, you know what, uh, it's a good balance. Um, the yard is a lot of luck, but you need to send very good pigeons. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that say that you, might, you might be a very good jockey uh, and you can uh, fly a average bird and it will do well. But you know with the one loft, you know, you know, there's 2,000, 5,000, 7,000 pigeons uh, get all trained by one guy. Uh, you need some luck, but it's also a good pigeon. So, you know, it's a nice balance. Um, it's also nice, you know, when you clock well in the season and you do well at one lot, you tend to, to look after that, that pair or that family. In terms of your selection, breeding, well, what do you... What we thought, what we picked up the last two or three years is definitely try and buy pigeons from the area. Um, you know, I tend to, if we send birds from Bluefontaine or the area from Bluefontaine or let's say Dino King, I like to go and buy from Dino King itself and then also from the top fanges in the area. I believe uh, uh, temperatures, uh, weather patterns, stuff like that, you know, it suits certain kind of pigeons. You know, um, uh, the guys from up there in the Papa or Sonskay, you know, it's a different kind, you know. Uh, big falls, you know, you know it's, 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 it's tough, it's dry, it's hot, you know what I'm saying. Um, but in South Africa the problem is, with our clubs, we tend to average 11, 12, 13, 1400 velocities. And then when we hit a summer race in January, velocity comes down to 800, 900 velocity. Uh, to me, you know, it's total a, a different kind of pigeon, a different kind of genetics. Genetic group, um, so it's tough to sometimes to test some of those birds because in our normal season we don't have 800, 900 velocities on average. So, uh, so I tend to to buy from the area, and uh, yeah, we've we had some uh, success with that. So. That's great. And now that 2022 just started, what are your objectives? I'm very excited to spend more time. Uh, it might be my worst enemy. Uh, but uh, uh, not a big team, uh, selected pigeons. Uh, obviously, would like to to uh, try and uh, be up there again with the young birds because uh, I really enjoyed enjoy my, my my young birds. Uh, it's the first year that I've competed in the GPU with a, with a full team, and um, this year I would like to see those young birds coming through now on the open seats. So I'm very excited now to have a, a stronger open side. And, and some babies coming through, and then yes, just um, to enjoy it, you know, just to, to, to because I mean that's what it's about, you know, it's to enjoy the sport and, uh, on weekends, and, and relax, and competitive, competitive, but um, have a good time. And your other initiatives that you involve in, I know you've got, you run an auction house. I've been uh, the auctioneer for the million dollar two three years after my my, uh, my uh, brother martin um, and after he passed away um, i took over and it was quite exciting uh, you know i think at this stage 
Uh, I've sold the most expensive pigeon uh, in South Africa. That was for one million seven hundred fifty thousand, uh, one million dollar. I think Mr. Gannis uh, bought it. Uh, and then uh, from there we started Top Pigeon. Uh, we always had people or people coming and ask for babies and ask for good uh, kid pairs and uh, who we can recommend. And uh, it's actually a, a hobby that started very small and it. And yeah, yeah. At this stage, I think we're holding all the records for the most expensive pigeon online in South Africa. Um, kick bears, cocks, hens, young birds, uh, and we really enjoy to sell very good genetics, very good pigeons. You know, what actually happened is, uh, or was, is um, when somebody like you, when they come by, so. First of all, we start to discuss what, it, what, what it's worth. And then you will tell me you will never sell it. And then I'll ask you a price, and you said, no, I'll not sell it. And then I'll say, okay, if I give you 100,000 rand, will you sell it? And then you start to think about it, because out of this, you can maybe pay for the season, you can look, you know, and you can buy better pigeons, and you can, and, and that's what actually happened with Top Pigeon. And uh, at this stage, uh, it's a hobby. And it's now a business. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And what what change would it bring to the sport man, if you had any power to exactly what you guys are doing? Uh, I I think it's 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 overdue. Uh, social media. Uh, I mean, at this stage, we got the TV, we got Facebook Live, we got uh, all these auctions, we got all these um, uh, mediums where we can really pump some information out. To the, to the normal guy, or to the beginner, to the youngster, to the guy that's flying birds for 30 years, 40 years, uh, to, to get information out. Um, surely the, the game is not the same as 30, 40, 50 years. There is some principles, but you know, it's like any, anything in life, there is progress. So uh, when there's a social platform like, like what, what you guys are doing now, it's easy because you can go into the guy's lounge. You can go. You can sit next to the pool. You can look at our interview. You can listen. You can think what he can change on his side. And um, so that's a change. I would like to see more because I think that will bring people to the sport and that will interest people. Yeah. Because we also get messages. You know, we get a good feedback from people. Yes, every time you know when you guys broadcast, or every time when 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 there's a program, I mean, just the response, and and I'm talking about worldwide. I'm not talking about South Africa. I'm talking about international. And it's good to to tell the world uh, there's some good pigeon fans in South Africa. They gotta be on the lookout. You know? And then, what's your, I'd say, biggest, uh, yeah, biggest error mistake that you've done? Ah. Since you've started. There's a few. I mean, in the pigeon game, in the pigeon game, I think you go and you learn out of your mistakes. But I, I might say one of the biggest uh, lessons I've learned is I like to buy my pigeon food in the beginning of the season, for the season. Um, uh, we, we we've experienced a a year where we did very very well and uh, we didn't plan quite good enough, and we had to change our our food, it was not the same standard or substandard. We didn't get enough bags for that time, we didn't know for our, and for three, four weeks we were batting and that cost us. Um, so, uh, there's some uh, things that I like to do begin season, to make sure I try to, because you know it's all 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, but if you put those 1% is next to each other, it's 5%. That's that's a difference uh, between first and second. And and you know, speaking on, about food, um, just uh, tell us more about your your type of food and, and medication. Or what what combinations do you? Yeah, you know, we've with? decided a few years ago to to uh, to go with the import food. The food is uh, you know it's either van rabies uh, or natural. Um, um, you know, I, I've always said you know those guys in Belgium. Germany, places like that. That's that first first country technology. Um, 
and, and when you start to go to the quality of the food, yes, I know it's a, it's a few rand more, uh, but if you look at, uh, look at your weight, you, you make sure that you, you, um, you give the right stuff. You don't have to give too much food, but it's all about what you are giving. Uh, and, 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 and it's all about quality. You know? So there's definitely a big difference. Uh, I know I know some some um, some farmers that's got their own big uh, maize farm. You know where they can get enough millets, but they also import. So you know yeah, it's just the job. And then the, the, what's the what's the financial impact on that? Yeah. Well, the financial impact is uh, like I said, you can go commercial. I don't have a problem with co uh, commercial. These guys are doing very well, like on a normal feed. But I think they tend to give too, met, too much uh, because I think because of the quality. Uh, where I'll, I'll rather import, I'll give a little bit less. But it's all balanced, and uh, I know exactly what I'm doing. You know, and, and it's and it's enough. Yeah. And medication? Medication. Um, look, we can sit here most probably for a day or two and talk about medication. You know, but I think it's 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 a question of keep the birds healthy. Um, we got a, I mean, like last year, um, we were on a certain program. We were, uh, we were doing canker and we were doing certain stuff every week for four, five, six weeks. And uh, and, the, and the fall just kept on going, you know. So uh, make sure that you, you're in the loft, make sure you listen to the pigeons, make sure you look at your results, make sure that, that you know, and, and, and take that as your guide. And um, I mean, you know, most fences have their families, you know, being involved in that. Yeah. Sport. Is that the case with you? You know what, um, being in the sport, basically my whole life, uh, my wife, she's a big uh, supporter. Uh, she, and she also understand, uh, you know, on a weekend, on a Thursday night, uh, we had the trap, we socialize, we, we enjoy, enjoy the weekends. Uh, when there's a special race, she would like to come with. We will have a bra, uh, wait for the pigeons, get, in, get excited. Um, and then obviously, you know, um, I fly, I'm flying the, you know, the racing pigeons from Alberton, from this loft here. But I'm actually staying in uh, about 50 kilometers from here. So, you know, I'm also traveling up and down. And on that side, I also got about 30, 35 uh, breathing pens. So that's, that's, that's part of my daily life. You know, we, and, and uh, when I buy a certain pigeon that excites me, I like to call it. Uh, I like this pigeon. Uh, I think this pigeon is going to do, uh, do well, and you can see that she also enjoys it. Yeah. Do you also uh, collect other birds from other fences that you see that might work for you, or that might you know pair with one of your best uh, birds? So to the, the nice part about top pigeon. Obviously, um, we handle three, four hundred pigeons a month. So at this stage, you know, if we do two or three auctions and we got twenty pigeons or thirty pigeons, every fancy will tell you will tell you this is his best. So the nice the nice part of the opportunity that I've that I've got is to handle very good pigeons that, like every day or weekly. And, at a certain stage, you start to get a feel what you like, what 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 fits your hand, what kind of pigeon, uh, and then also your family. And then yes, if there's a pigeon that you really like, um, uh, I'm quite quite heavy on results. Uh, I, I believe uh, winners will breed winners. Um, so um, then I'll I'll bring one or two pigeons in and see if I can strength. Uh, whatever we've done the last 15, 20 years. Um, and I mean, if you ask me strains, I mean, I can sit here and tell you from Quipman to Hoyman to Klausens to Gaby van der Beeres to Slimmer Patches that think very, very well for us. Uh, I've got friends uh, where I bought some Slimmer Pats, Pits Black Pigeons. Um, and I mean, this, this one hen, I actually lost it, but uh, on the GPU, I think in the first five weeks she was in, uh, out the top top five, top six in the unit. You know, she was an absolute superstar. You know, so uh, but yeah, uh, different 
genetics. A good pigeon, like you. A good fans, yeah. yeah. This pigeon uh, did very well for us uh, this year for Bene Klotz. Um, she ended up uh, Sanpu uh, bronze medal. Um, the cat could eat 500 to 2,000 pigeons. She did very, very, very well. Um, beautiful blue bar hen. Um, flew her from the perch every week. So that was on the short distance. And uh, we'd seen uh, also one or two races in the middle distance. But we decided to, to keep her back. And um, well, she's, a, she's a baby still, uh, 7629. And then uh, try and fly, uh, give her a chance in the, in the open series in, in the next year. Yeah, mid size, mid size pigeon, but um, a superstar. We did breed, uh, breed some babies, about two babies, just to um, uh, keep some of the genetics in the in the stock loft. And uh, yeah, superstar. Now speaking about good pigeons, um, do, do you believe in carrying or homing lots of birds, or are you are you a short no, team? No, I'm quite I'm fans? quite selective in the sense of what I'm. But, um, you, you, know, you can start with two, three hundred pigeons, nothing wrong with it. Uh, but with our uh, capacity or availability, I like to, to, to work with a squad. Uh, there was an old man uh, that said to me one day, if it's, if it's an effort to catch every pigeon and give it a pull, then you've got too many birds. And I, I will always remember that. And um, yes, I'm going to. I want to know what pigeon uh, I can expect this weekend by working with that team. Yeah. And the Widowood system, do you, do you do that? or Widowood system, we did try five, six years ago. Obviously, um, uh, our availability and our space, it all depends on your time. Uh, that I, what I don't have at this stage, but the last two or three years, we were just flying from the perch, uh, like a normal, yeah. From the perch, no nest positions, no. And uh, I think Dirk, uh, uh, he ended up third in the in the, in the TRPF. Uh, yeah, no, I want the young bit, so I'd rather stick. And then racing in Alberton, do you, do you still want to... Yeah, continue? what happened is I was flying on the West Rand and uh, did very well there. Uh, always in the top two, top three, me and my brother. And uh, we won supper lots. And um, I had a chat with Mark Hitchibrand and said to me, I said to him, uh, if we bring some of those birds from the West End to the Alberton side, we'll show you pigeons. And the next day, Mark phoned me and said, there's opportunity, uh, the loft set supper is available. And what happened is, yeah, we decided to take the challenge. Uh, super club, Alberton. You've got your Geislo for the the you've got your Mark. Brand, you've got Johanna Hamilton, you've got Samuel Lofts, you've got really top, top, top guys. And um, you've got to come or you've got to go to a, a top loft. You look, you know, with Alberton, um, if you win the club, it's 90% that you will win the Fed. Um, and you might be, you might be seventh, eighth in the club, but you might end up top 10 in the Federation. So it's very strong. Very, very competitive. But what I like about the club, all the birds are looked after. It's a professional way. There's no sick birds. Good quality pigeons. Uh, good food. Uh, good people. And uh, what's the what's your ultimate tip that you can give the guys out there? Uh, so a tip. Uh, I actually had an interview last week, and the guy asked me the same question. I said to him. If I'm a youngster, I'll go to the top guy in the area and I'll buy myself 10 or 15, 20 babies. I'll go to the guy that's second, the guy that's third and fourth and buy from me 15 or 20 pigeons and I'll start my own family. So the best of the best, I'll keep. I'll buy again, I'll keep. And again, like I said, I believe winners will breed winners. And then you have your own Vienna Colots family. So in 10 years time, Yes, it's Quipman, yes, it's Hoyman, yes, it's Gabby's, yes, it's Gannis, yes, they're all coming from different, but 
at some stage you decide, I'm going to take this hoi man, I'm going to put this with this Gabby van den Bieren, put them together and see what's the result. And there's nothing more enjoyable when you bred your own bait after a year or two. And when you load it on a, on a, on a Thursday night, you can't wait for Saturday. You, the birds was, were expecting to be there too. You already by 10 o'clock, you, you're there. Because you know that white or that red or that black or that blue bar, that chick, she's on her way. And you want to be there. Do you have closing remarks? Ach, you know what? Um, again, thanks for the opportunity. Like I said, I think with this whole social uh, platform and, 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 and what you guys are doing, I mean, super. I mean, we need this. You know, in the old days, there was uh, books, you know, like in Afrikaans, uh, Drie Duiven Meesters Vertel, or, or um, you know, there was guys that, that, that write stuff in books that we could have bought. Uh, and I think at this stage, there's not many books coming out. I don't know if it's all, all the old way of doing things. But now, we've got cameras. You can sit in front of a loft. Uh, this can go to cell phones. This can go to TV. This can go to Facebook. It can go to... And information can go out, you know? And what I do at my loft might be different from somebody else. Because I've never been invited to somebody else's loft. I mean, you guys are having the opportunity now to visit every week or every second week. And I think if you uh, will tell me from day one what, what you knew, and now after visiting 20 or 30 different acts and getting all the opinions, I mean, surely there must be something out of that that you can put together and, and know. This is what I'm going to do this year. I want to try this. I like that. I'll like, try this and learn. And I think that's, uh, that will bring the sport together, make it bigger. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're all going to end up flying maybe from one or two clubs. Uh, it's really, there, there is definitely a, a decline, but if we can get the numbers out and tell the people about our sport and show the, the pigeons and show the food and show the way and, and tell them, that's why we are flying pigeons. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, when somebody asks me, how, ah, you know, this week the pigeon is flying back from both of the West. Next week the same pigeon is flying back from Carlsberg. How do they know to fly back to this loft and to have the love to come back to this loft? Surely, that's, that will grow this point. And that's why we are flying pigeons. Because it's, it's one of God's uh, biggest uh, creatures uh, that I mean pigeons and and, and um, it's fascinating it's fascinating to sit here on a Saturday and to to wait for the superstar thanks a lot for joining joining us on this episode of season two pigeon Day news thank you very much yeah and I just want to mention something before we go uh, I would like to see a South African pigeon fan Winning, um, winning the Africa race of uh, Africa Pro. Africa Pro. Um, I think Hendrik von Wiedig, uh, they're doing a great job there. I think uh, it's an international platform. Um, I would like to see South Africa right up there. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And there you have it from Hein Benneke. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our TV channel. My name is Tato Schoen and this is Pigeon Deva News.